Hi, I'm Roy from Drone School UK. Today we're going to break down the updates the CAA have made to the UK Drone Code, which were finalised in September 2025. Back in May 2025, I did a review video of the proposed changes, which were included in a document called CAP 3105 that the CAA published in May 2025. Most of those items in that document have made their way through into the actual drone code. And here we are on the CAA website with the drone code. And this is a mixture of both legislation and guidance. You have to look through the various points, some are legislation, some are guidance. And you can see the regulations are coming in from January the 1st, 2026. And I can view the list of the changes or the updates here. But one thing you need to know is that the actual drone and model code PDF has not been updated. This has not been updated here yet. I don't think it'll probably be updated till November, December. But the actual updates are detailed here. So if I press on the updates, which I've done earlier, there they are. September 2025 published amendments. If I click back on this, you see Constantina's back up. So if you click back down on that, it gives you all of the published amendments. So let's go through what's new, what stays the same, and how the changes really affect you. The first key change is the weight threshold. The this has been reduced down from 250 grams to 100 grams and this comes in as of January the 1st 2026. So if you have a drone with a camera and it's over 100 grams you will need both a flyer ID and an operator ID. The next relates to drone class markings. Now we're going for our own UK class markings rather than the current ESA European markings which are C0 to C0 six the latest dji mini 5 pro for example is a c0 drone it's got c0 on the bottom the air 3s has got c1 on the bottom the mavic 4 pro has c2 on the bottom those are the ESA regs we're actually going to bring our own because we're now lo no longer in europe we need to bring our own rules and regulations because if something happens in brussels and they change the details of a c0 it would affect us so we're going to have our own rules and they're going to be uk zero through to uk six and the CIA will still recognise the existing C labels for two years from January the 1st, 2026 through to January the 1st, 2028. This is quite important because the UK, uh, UK is, let's say the Mini 5 Pro, which is a good example now, that's got a, a C0 waiting on it. DJI will probably issue a UK 0 sticker soon in 2026 who knows exactly when which you can put it on the bottom of the drone all drones that are to be sold after january the 1st 2026 will have to have a uk zero or a uk one or a uk two upwards number on the bottom if they're being sold in the uk so it's quite important this because if you bought a mini uh, 5 pro like i have in september 2025 I've got till January the 1st, 2028 to actually implement various things related to that drone. And we can use these C ratings for the next two years from January 2026 through to 2028 um, to give us more advantage. The next is the description of airspace has been renamed. A1 is flying over people. A2 is flying near people, minimum separation of 50 metres. And A3 is flying far from people, minimum separation of 150 metres. And when you look at this A1 and start to relate it to the C0 or UK0 or C1 or UK1 uh, drone classifications, this starts to make sense. So the A1, you can fly the C0 and C1 drones up to 900 grams and they can be flown over uninvolved people. Now this is a major change. This A1 category 
was previously only related to C0 drones or drones under 250 grams. It's now possible to fly a C1 drone in this A1 category, and that's the Air 3S, for example, from January the 1st, 2026. And that Air, 1, that Air 3S can have doesn't have to be in a slow speed mode. It can be in normal mode or it can be in sports mode. Then the A2 cl clarifies minimum horizontal distances, and, and it's not a bubble of 50 meters. And that's from uninvolved people. And it's a minimum of 50 meters now from a single or a small group of buildings. Now, within that A2 category, there is the upgraded training for the A2 certificate of competence, which we do. Now, that had quite a few advantages. One of them has been removed. You, th that was the 250 to 500 gram rule. That's gone as of January the, f uh, the 1st, 2026. However, it allows closer flights to uninvolved people for C2 drones. For example, the DJI Mavic 4 Pro. And that's down to 30 meters um, rather than 50 meters. And if you're in a slow speed mode, it's down to five meters from uninvolved people, which is a major difference. But you need to have the A2 certificate of competency to be able to do that with a C2 drone. And the A3 uh, category stays the same. It's 150 meters from residential, commercial, industrial and recreational areas. The next change relates to night flying and the CAA from January the 1st, 2026 are requiring a flashing light or a strobe light for any night flights. Now these can be added to the drone. Uh, they can be strapped to the top of the drone. They normally weigh around nine grams and they cost around 14 pounds. The Mini 5 Pro, for example, already has a light underneath it. But that can affect your filming if you're filming at night, if you've got lights or strobe lights on the drone because it affects the video or it'll affect the still image. And finally, the biggest change in the regs is remote ID. All drones over 100 grams with a camera will require remote ID. Now, new drones sold in the UK with the UK 0 to UK 6 labels are to have an active direct remote ID from January the 1st, 2026. It has to be active on the drone. Now, all drones are to have remote ID from the 1st of Jan, 2028. So how will this work in practice? Well, let's take my drone, my DJI Mini 5 Pro, which I bought in September uh, of this year. Now that drone has a C0 rating and if I use that drone and leave the C0 rating on it, I won't need to put a remote ID on it until January the 1st, 2028. I can use that uh, grace period from the 1st of Jan 2026 to 2028 and leave my C0 drone as is, and I won't need to put a remote ID on it. Now, DJI within most of their modern drones have a software and firmware upgrade which gives you a transmitter remote ID on the drone. And other drones will have to have some form of transmitting remote ID attached to it, normally adding between 12 and 14 grams to the weight of the drone. Now that could push the drone over the 250 key drone weight. Looking at the remote ID, as I said earlier, you can have one attached to the drone or it can be a software upgrade. Now, the CAA want a hybrid network. Um, that's a combination of a direct a remote ID and a network ID. But the system is expensive and no funding has been achieved or been promised so far. So that won't come in very quickly. Now, it'll be the direct remote ID that's used at first. So looking at that, you'll see the drone will transmit an unencrypted data like the drone unique number, um, location of the controller, telemetry like the speed, the height of the drone, the direction of travel, the distance from the controller, the location of the controller, and that's transmitted locally um, around your drone and can possibly be read by phone apps like Open Drone ID that you see on the screen here. But on average, the broadcast distances will vary probably up to about five kilometers. 
and the network type of um, ID would collect all that drone data and that could be harvested and be accessed via an, a, an API uh, to a third party. But that's a way off. Now, remote ID was implemented in the US in April 2024, but it's for drones over 250 grams. And you can look on the USA FAA website for DJI drones that have their direct remote ID approved. This is normally a software upgrade. Your registration page on the CAA website is already set up for remote ID. If you press the view button on there, it comes up with your remote ID and gives you a remote ID number with a three digit private key. You then go to the DJI Fly app in the safety app tab and hit remote identification. This then brings up a section where you can put your number in from your remote ID on the CAA website. Now to tie everything together, let's look at the areas that haven't changed. The first one is the maximum altitude is still 120 meters, 400 feet. Maximum distance you can fly the drone away from you is 500 meters. There is visual line of sight rules are still the same. There is no flight in a no-fly zone of FRZ unless you've got permission and there's no flights over crowds under any circumstances with any drone. Flying using FPV goggles is still exactly the same. You need a spotter because you're wearing goggles and you can't see the drone. And then the final one is follow me mode. You can fly the drone up to 50 meters away from you when you're in follow me mode. We now covered all of the changes to the drone code for January 2026. Hope that helps. Happy flying. Bye for now. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to the channel or watch the next video in the playlist or the new videos that we've just recently downloaded.